okay I've got, I've got something I want you to, to do um, it's a bit tricky <laughs> um, but but I think I think it'll be all right so if you can just listen now and um, open your books to page yeah, if you wouldn't wouldn't mind <laughs> you open your, open your books to page 67 now just 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 hang on a minute while I, while I put this slide up hang on I, I just can't find it but uh, hang, on, hang on just wait a minute uh, yeah okay here, here we go here we go right now as I've, as I've said before um, I want you to watch the video it's about two minutes long and then after that I'm going to give you a task and I want you just to jot down some ideas on a on a paper somewhere or you know or you could write, write it somewhere doesn't matter really where and um, then you're going to chat to your partner about those ideas and then after that you're going to report back to the class about what you found do you all understand this is an example in case you haven't guessed of how not to give good instructions. If you're interested in thinking about analysing what's not so good about those instructions and perhaps how you can give better ones, then keep watching. I'm Yoga Conga from elttraining.com. I'm an experienced CELTA tutor, an assessor, teacher educator, and I know that one of the most difficult things for novice teachers and trainees is to learn to give good, clear, concise instructions. It should be easy, just tell them what to do. But somehow it's actually a lot more difficult than that. Let's look at it all in a bit more detail. So why are good instructions important? This might seem self-evident. The learners need to know what to do. But giving clear instructions also means that your class runs smoothly and efficiently. It helps to build trust with your learners and rapport with them. They feel more comfortable if they feel as if you know what you're doing and what you want them to do. And it also increases opportunities for student talking time. If it takes you less time to set up the activity, there'll be more time for them to actually do it and practice. So these are all good reasons to give clear instructions. They're a central part of efficient and effective classroom management. So what can go wrong? Think back to those instructions I just gave you. They were awful, <laughs> but what was so bad? Let's see together. Okay, I've got, I've got something I want you to, to do. I'm not sure whether this gets their attention, but I can certainly think of better ways to do so. Your learners need to be listening to you when you give instructions. So make eye contact. Don't shilly shally about. Be decisive about it. Um, it's a bit tricky <laughs> um, but but I think I think it'll be all right don't tell them it's going to be difficult this won't inspire confidence listen you're the teacher you choose what you take into the classroom if you think it's going to be too difficult for them then take in something that's more appropriate or adapt what you've got there so that it's easier for them that's your job so if you can just listen now and um, open your books to page yeah, if you wouldn't wouldn't mind <laughs> yeah, open your open, open your books to page 67 it's really humanly normal to want to be polite to people especially if those people are people you don't know very well but politeness tends to lead to more talk think about this page 67 Open page 67 in your books. Could you open page 67 in your books, please? If it's not too much trouble, could I ask you to open page 67 in your books, please? See what I mean? The more polite you are, the more language there will be. It's okay to be direct. You can show politeness in your intonation, perhaps say please, that's enough. Page 67, please. 
Of course, it becomes second nature eventually. But when you first start teaching, you need to think about whether all the language that you're using is really necessary. This is especially true at lower levels. Remember that anything you say is in a foreign language and they've got to process it. You don't want to overwhelm them or confuse them. Now, just, just, just hang on a minute while I, while I put this slide up. Hang on, I, I just can't find it, but uh, hang, hang on, just wait a minute. Uh, yeah, okay, here, here we go, here we go. Here's another example of using too much language. This is called commentating, when the teacher tells the learners what she's doing or what she's thinking. This is usually caused by nerves. People don't really like silence. But again, it's just more language for the learners to process and decode. So keep it zipped and make sure you're well prepared before the lesson. Right, now, as I've, as I've said before, um, I want you to watch the video. It's about two minutes long. And then after that, long, repetitive, unplanned instructions are a problem. If you haven't thought about this before, it's actually not as easy as you think. You might even want to try scripting them, writing down what you're going to say. Now, listen carefully here. I am not saying read them out because I think that's a bit wooden, but it is a helpful process to write them down because it helps you to see how you can be clearer. And I want you just to jot down some ideas on a, on a paper somewhere or, you know, or you could write, write it somewhere, doesn't matter really where. And um, then you're going to chat to your partner about those ideas. And then after that, you're going to report back to the class about what you found. There are a couple of problems here. The first is that we've got four instructions at the same time. Don't do this. Give them one instruction, then get them to do that thing. Then give them the next instruction. They don't need to know what's going to happen 10 minutes down the line in the lesson. They just need to know what they've got to do now. The second issue with this part is the language. Jot down some ideas, chat with your neighbour, report back. Do they understand all of these expressions? You want them to understand your instructions, so grade your language so that it's easy for them. Do you all understand? This is a classic. Of course it's good to make sure that your learners understand, but this question isn't very reliable. Will they be brave enough to actually say no? I'm the stupid one I don't understand. Or maybe they think they do understand, but they don't. There are a couple of better ways to do this. You can ask what are called instruction checking questions or ICQs. These are questions with short, easy answers that can only be answered if they do understand. How many questions do you have to answer? Are you working with a partner or not? The problem with these is that they can end up sounding rather patronising. So for my money, the best thing to do is a demonstration. Do the first one or two questions with them, or go through the interaction that you want them to do with one of the stronger learners. So to summarise, what do you need to think about when you're giving instructions? Plan. The first thing is to plan your instructions, especially if you're a novice teacher. Prepare them, perhaps even script them. Not all the time, but sometimes to help you to practice, to get them clear and succinct. Get their attention. The next thing is to get their attention and make sure they're listening to you when you give your instructions. This doesn't have to be major. Right, okay something like that, but get their attention. 
This is even more important possibly online because you can't see so easily if they're listening to you. You could get them to write hi in the chat or put a smiley face in the chat or something, something to make sure, or put their hands up, maybe raise their hands virtually. Make sure that they're all listening to you before you start. This might seem obvious, but if you're in a physical classroom, speak to the whole class. If you're standing here, for example, and talking to this table, then your back will be turned to quite a few of your learners. So think about where it's the best place to stand. It may be here, possibly even here, but make sure they can all see you. If you're online, use the gallery view so that you can see all of them and check if they look confused. Next your instructions need to be clear. Speak clearly, project your voice, make sure they can hear you if you're online. Grade your language, use short sentences, simple language. This is particularly true at lower levels, but it's also good practice at higher levels, I think. Visual clues can really help. Use gestures, facial expressions, Show them where the exercise is on the worksheet. You might find that writing some instructions up on a PowerPoint slide is helpful. As I say, especially if you're online because you can't be quite so sure that they've understood. Being clear is important, but so is being succinct. So no need to be too wordly polite. Stay in the moment, one instruction at a time. Tell them what they're doing now and then do it and cut the commentary. You don't need to tell them what you're thinking or doing. And then of course, the final tip is to check that they understand, preferably by doing a demonstration. You can then monitor around to make sure that everybody's understood. If you're online, it's a bit more tricky to monitor, but you can do a quick sweep of breakout rooms to make sure that everybody's on task. One final thought, here's a good question. If you're giving a worksheet, should you give it out before or after you give your instructions? I think this depends a little bit on what your task is. If you give people a handout as soon as you do, they will start to read it. It's human nature and then of course you've lost them. So if you're giving out, for example, a reading text, I would give the instructions beforehand. On the other hand, it can be very helpful if you've got the worksheet there in front of you to show them what they've got to do and where on the sheet it is. So you have to balance out these two things and make a decision that's right for you and your learners for that particular activity. I hope that these thoughts help a bit. If they did, you might like to check out the other videos on my free CELTA toolkit, including more on classroom management, teaching language, vocabulary, skills, and a lot of other things. Good luck with your instructions and your classes, and thanks for watching. Bye-bye.